Most cyclists waste time and miss out on consistent performance because they overlook a few critical steps. These aren't complicated, but they make the difference between finishing strong and barely hanging on. In this video, I want to help you understand why fatigue hits harder than it should and how you can start building more durability into your rides without needing more time to train or going harder. We're going to break down what fatigue actually is, why it's more than just low energy or sore legs, and what you can start doing differently on your next ride. And if you ever want to go deeper, I'll point you into some more specifics. You trained, you fueled, the numbers look solid, but mid-ride, maybe on a climb, maybe pushing into headwind, you cracked. Power dipped. Legs lit up. Motivation? Gone. Sound familiar? If you're like a lot of riders I hear from, whether you're training for a century, a brevet, or just showing up for the weekend group ride, you've probably asked, what happened? It's not just fitness or fueling. The real reason you crack is more complex and way more interesting. Because it's not just your legs, it's your brain, your muscles, and your fuel systems all negotiating limits at the same time. And the good news is that you can train every part of it. I've seen the difference firsthand in the riders that I've coached. When they start focusing on durability, everything changes. And by the end of this video, you'll know how to start as well. For years, you were told that fatigue was simple. You run out of energy, lactic acid builds up, you slow down. That model, well, it's outdated. Science now shows fatigue is a negotiation between your body and your brain. Your brain is constantly scanning for threats, heat, dehydration, low fuel, muscle damage, and it will decide how much effort it will allow. It's not weakness, it's a built-in safety system. Fatigue has three overlapping causes, central, peripheral, and metabolic. Central fatigue starts in the brain. It drops drive like a circuit breaker before things overheat. Peripheral fatigue happens in the muscles. Byproducts, inflammation, and micro damage reduce force. Metabolic fatigue is about fuel, running low or flooding the system with exhaust. These types of fatigue don't hit in isolation. They kind of layer up, they build and compound over time. And when riders say, I just faded at the end, that isn't only strength failing, it's your body reacting to those stacked signals saying back off. That's why I've been leaning into the concept of durability, because it captures exactly what most riders are missing. You can also start by testing your durability with my free durability calculator linked in the pinned comment below. When you sign up, I'll send you everything you need, the athlete durability guide and a structured test file to easily determine your own fatigue power reserve. Now let's talk about Lucas, an athlete that I coach who prepped for the Peaks Challenge. If you don't know, Peaks Challenge is Australia's premier one-day sportive, an ultra-endurance beast with over 230 kilometers and 4,000 meters of climbing. Year one, Lucas went out hard too hard. On early ramps like Tawonga Gap, he pushed well above threshold to stay with the front of the pack, and it felt great until it didn't. By Mount Hotham, his power nosedived. Cramps set in, his heart rate drifted down, even as perceived effort soared, and the rest of the ride turned into survival mode. He gave it an 8 out of 10 for suffering. Hot, dehydrated, mentally fried, he spent the final 100 kilometers just trying to finish. So what happened? Fatigue in all three forms, central fatigue from overpacing, peripheral fatigue from heat and muscle strain, and metabolic fatigue from burning too much fuel too early. But he learned from it, and he changed how he trained. So fast forward one year, same event, same athlete, completely different outcome. Lucas trained specifically for durability with back-end intervals after long rides, tighter and more consistent fueling, and specific central fatigue tolerance work. This time, he rode smarter, he paced better, and he held more power for less perceived effort. He finished nearly an hour faster, averaging 14 watts higher across the entire ride, and his heart rate stayed stable, cadence smooth, and remarkably, seven hours deep, he laid down a 10-minute effort of 321 watts. And this isn't just fitness, that's fatigue resistance. Same course, same athlete, but this time his brain never hits the brakes. His system stayed balanced, and that's the difference between fading early and finishing strong. Now picture this, hard ride Saturday, another Sunday, and by Monday you feel flat, even though it was just zone two. That's cumulative fatigue. Day two, that heavy leg feeling is peripheral and metabolic. 
glycogen low, inflammation high, sleep didn't go well, central fatigue stacks on top of that. Science shows power at the moderate to heavy transition falls even within a single ride after two hours of steady cycling. Stretch that stress across consecutive days and cumulative declines pile up as well. Your brain notices and it starts to pull back. Physically fine, but mentally toast, central fatigue talking. That's why pacing and recovery matter, especially if you're not 25 anymore. Ever ridden in 35 degrees and felt like your engine seized or tried climbing at 2,500 meters and you couldn't hold your usual watts? That's not mental weakness. That's your brain protecting the system. In heat, core temperature rises, dopamine drops, and the brain says, slow down. At altitude, lower oxygen ramps up muscle fatigue. And again, the brain caps output. Same ride, different environment, totally different limits. These conditions amplify central and peripheral fatigue. Even when the numbers look steady, perceived effort skyrockets. Heat acclimation and altitude adaption aren't just for pros. They help every rider go longer, safer, and smarter. And durability, your ability to hold performance as fatigue builds, it's not your peak power, it's what you can do after three, four, or five hours in the saddle. Even if you're short on time, you can build fatigue resistance. Do intervals at the end of long rides. Fuel early and consistently. Try brain endurance training. This is short cognitive tasks after rides. Durability isn't a trend. It's the missing skill in most training plans. The separator between strong starts and strong finishes. We all have a critical fatigue threshold when the system senses too much strain. So chemical or mechanical, the brain steps in to preserve function. One experiment blocked spinal nerve feedback. Cyclists went harder but crashed faster. No feedback, no regulation. The take home, your brain is always scanning for risk. Training while fatigue can raise that threshold. That brain muscle feedback loop is the next best lever that's going to be pulled in endurance performance. Lactate, once blamed, is actually fuel and a signaling molecule, but excess still alters brain chemistry. You feel flat, unmotivated. That's central fatigue too. Add inflammation, poor sleep, or heat, and a well trained body suddenly feels underdone. Recovery isn't just rest and carbs, it's a chemical reset. So what should you do? Well, you can occasionally train hard. You can add back-end intervals. You can fuel early, prioritize sleep, acclimate to heat, use music or mantras. You can build strength for the long haul and train sharpness under fatigue. You can start by testing your durability with my free durability calculator linked in the pinned comment below. When you sign up, I'll send you everything you need, the athlete durability guide and a structured test file to easily determine your own fatigue power reserve. Then start by choosing one or two durability methods to focus on and then incorporate them carefully into your training week. Start small, progress methodically and listen to your body because fatigue isn't just your legs giving up. It's your brain, metabolism, and muscle hitting a temporary limit. The best part, that limit can move. And in the next video, I'll walk you through exactly how to train for it.